I think the new Olympus 150 to 400 millimeter f4.5 Pro weighs about half of what I expected. I knew that it would be easy to handle and have great image stabilization because it's an Olympus lens, but it has really exceeded all of my expectations. And honestly, my expectations were really high. The ergonomics of this lens are really a thing of beauty. It balances so perfectly on the EM1X and it really feels like it was made to go on that particular camera. Even the position of the built-in teleconverter switch, just for example, if you need a little bit more reach, it's really easy to just reach over with your finger and flip that lever. Another thing that we talk about with great lenses is that character and the 150 to 400 really has a beautiful look to it. One of the other things I love about this lens is that it can focus at 1.3 meters. So for me being six feet, three inches tall, I can focus on subjects between my feet on the ground. Hey guys, it's Rob Knight. And uh, as some of you may know, I am an Olympus educator. And that is, uh, it's my pleasure really to, to teach and uh, sort of extol the virtues of Olympus cameras and lenses uh, all over the country in workshops and camera store events and things like that. But I don't know if I've ever been so pleased to be an ambassador for Olympus as when they asked me if I wanted to try out the new Olympus 150 to 400 millimeter f4.5 ED Pro 1.25X. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that's all the initials and all the numbers. Basically, it's the new 150 to 400 Pro. Um, I've been waiting for this lens since it came out. I've been eagerly anticipating it. And uh, even uh, like my colleagues and I, when we were in Peru in February of this year, we were actually fantasizing about having this lens. And oh man, that would be the perfect lens for this situation. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, when, you know, here we are on the river and shooting from these small boats and sometimes the birds are really far away and sometimes the birds are very close and sometimes the wildlife is right on the edge of the boat and wouldn't it be great if we had a nice versatile professional level uh, zoom telephoto lens that we could use and not have to keep changing lenses because uh, me personally i was using the olympus 40 to 150 millimeter f 2.8 pro with and without the teleconverters and then on my other camera i had the 300 millimeter f4 pro with various teleconverters. So depending on the situation, I was having to switch between cameras and switch lenses and um, add or subtract teleconverters to get just the right focal length. So that brings me to this bad boy. This is a 150 to 400 millimeter lens. So on my Olympus cameras, that gives me a 300 to 800 millimeter field of view uh, as, as far as the 35 millimeter equivalent goes. It's also a nice fast f4.5 f-stop throughout the zoom range. That's great. So my exposure is not going to change as I change the field of view. Now, what makes this thing especially attractive for me is this little switch right here. This is the built-in 1.25 teleconverter. So that effectively gives me a thousand millimeters at the long end uh, with the teleconverter engaged. And I lose, um, I think it's two thirds of a stop to f5.6. So right out of the box with nothing added to this, I've got a 1000 millimeter f5.6 lens. And you can see how small it is. I mean, it is not a huge lens. It's, it probably weighs half of what I expected it to, honestly. I, I, I knew it was gonna be lighter weight than say, the, you know, a giant Canon 600 or something like that. But um, it's so easy to carry around. In fact, when I got the box from FedEx, I thought, maybe this isn't the lens that I was expecting because it's just not heavy at all. And it balances so perfectly on the EM1X. Um, honestly, I haven't used it on the EM1 Mark III because I haven't really had the need to and I've only had it for a day and a half. But um, this is huge for wildlife photographers, for sports photographers. Now you have something that is from 300 millimeters, which is not super long telephoto all the way out to a thousand millimeters without changing a lens, without adding a teleconverter or anything. 
Plus, I can add the 1.4 teleconverter or I can add the 2x teleconverter. And now I've got a 2000 millimeter effective focal length at f11. And I can tell you the first thing I did when I got this lens and put it on the camera was throw the 2x teleconverter on it because I want to see exactly what I can squeeze out of this thing, what, see what the uh, image quality is like, and uh, see if that's really usable because you know it's great if you've got a thousand millimeter lens or a two thousand millimeter lens but if it's not sharp or it doesn't focus fast or the image stabilization is not awesome basically at that focal length then it's going to be really hard to use and it's not going to be the uh, the magical tool that I hoped it was going to be well the 150 to 400 actually has uh, with the uh, sync is bodies like the EM1X and the EM1 Mark III, it actually gives you up to eight stops of image stabilization, which is fantastic. I was looking at some of my shots from the zoo from yesterday and noticing that I have tack sharp images at 125th of a second, at a 50th of a second, down to a 30th of a second. With this thing zoomed all the way out to 400 millimeters with the teleconverter engaged, so I'm at 1000 millimeters shooting at a 50th of a second and getting tack sharp shots. That is awesome. That makes me want to go right now to the airport and fly to Costa Rica and shoot the things that I love to photograph down there with this tool. And honestly, I would take this and I would take the Olympus 12 to 100 millimeter F4 and I'd be done. That would be all I would need. So I'm gonna go over some of the details that I really specifically love about this lens. Now you can read all day long about the specs and all that stuff, but there are a few things that I learned from using this lens that uh, some things surprised me and some things I just feel like uh, they need to be covered. So I'm gonna go over the actual barrel of the lens. And uh, one of the things that I love about this is where the switch is for the built-in teleconverter. I can, when I'm shooting and I think, well, I need a little bit more range. All I have to do is just flip that little switch. And that is so convenient. Um, it's one of the things that with a lot of Olympus lenses, the, you'll see it online and it seems like a big lens or it seems like a, I, I, this lever looked like a really big sort of cumbersome thing, but man, it's just this little bitty switch and it's so easy to use. Um, and even with this big hole in the side, it's still a weather sealed lens. So uh, that is really cool. It also has this uh, set button here. So you can save a particular uh, focal plane. Okay, so let's say I'm shooting in my bird studio in my front yard and I have one of my perches and the birds are mainly focused on that perch. They're mainly coming to that perch and that's where I want to make the picture. I can set, I can focus on that perch and set the focus there. Then as I may shoot around different areas in the yard, if a bird comes to that perch, I can press one of these function buttons and the lens automatically moves back to that focus position. So as I move the camera back, to, to that perch, it'll auto automatically be focused there. I hope that makes sense. It's a really neat feature. Now moving up to the function buttons that I mentioned a second ago, there are four function buttons around the lens. And uh, a few people I've noticed have said, yeah, there are four programmable function buttons. There are, but they're all the same button. You cannot program each one for a different function. You program the function buttons for one thing, right? So in other words, you can't have one for manual focus and one for your, you know, focus lock or whatever. So, um, and around the other side here, we've got uh, this cockpit basically of, of controls. And one of them is for the lens function buttons. So you can have it, a, you can go into the menu and set the lens function button for whatever you like. Or if you switch it to preset, then it behaves as I described with the set button and, uh, and using this to go, to, uh, go back to a memorized focus point. Uh, you've also got switches for autofocus, of course, the image stabilizer and a focus limiter. Now this lens will focus at 1.3 meters. This is basically the world's biggest macro lens because I can focus, I can literally point it at the ground between my feet and do macro photography just like that. Um, so I can, if I'm shooting close up subjects, I can limit the focus to that close up distance. And if I'm shooting birds that are really far away or some other subject that's far away, I can use the uh, six meters to infinity so that it's not trying to rack all the way through the focus range and, and focus on something close up. 
Um, there's also a switch for the beep. This is not for the beep in the camera, the focus beep. This is to do with the, uh, the, the memory. So when you set a focus point and then press the memory, press the function button to go back to that recorded uh, autofocus spot, it will beep or not depending on where the switch is. Now, one thing I noticed in using this lens that um, it's not something I even put any thought to ahead of time, but the zoom ring moves so smoothly, which is, that's good, but it also, it doesn't move very far. So when I go from 150 millimeters to 400 millimeters, it's just that much. I mean, it's not even a quarter of a turn. And so I noticed that when I was photographing, in fact, the lions that you saw at the beginning of the video, I was shooting a kind of a wider shot and then I wanted to zoom in. I just went boop and I'm zoomed all the way in. And that is really awesome because there's, there's some lenses where you have to turn or if they are, uh, you know, like the focus by wire and that kind of thing. Um, it's nice to have a hard stop at either end and it's nice to have such a short throw on that, uh, that zoom ring. So I can go from 300 millimeters uh, effective range. I can zoom all the way in and hit that button and now I'm at a thousand millimeters. And to have that ability to change and get exactly what I need and to zoom all the way in uh, with just those two little movements without moving my hands, that I know for, from personal experience, that can save me shots, right? That can get you shots that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. It's the details on this lens that have impressed me the most, I think. Um, I know some people are going to balk at the price. This is a professional camera lens. This is on par with lenses for other systems that cost $12,000, that cost $15,000. You know, if you think about it in those terms, you can sell your $12,000 lens, buy this setup with the 150 to 400 and the EM1X and still have enough money to go on a workshop or take a trip somewhere to go make some pictures. So, um, but it's little things like if you'll notice the black here on the bottom of the tripod collar, it's padded and it has the same texture, a similar texture as uh, the camera grip does. So if, you're, if you have it like this and you're using it as a handle, well, you have a little something to hang on to. It's not just slippery aluminum. Uh, and that doesn't get in the way of actually using it as a tripod collar. Uh, the other thing I like about it is there's little indents. So as you move the tripod collar, it clicks in. It clicks in. So if you have the camera on the tripod and you're using that and you want to go to vertical, there's a, there's a specific notch that helps you go from horizontal to vertical without having to line up any sort of indicator marks or anything like that. Uh, and it's little things like that that make this just a pleasure to use. All of this fit and finish doesn't do anybody any good if it doesn't perform, if it doesn't make a beautiful photograph. And I'm here to tell you, it does. The first time I picked up the lens, put it on a camera, walked out my front door to try to look for whatever. It's, it's fall going on winter here in Atlanta and there's not a whole lot of wildlife around, but um, I was shocked at how fast it locked focus. Uh, it's very accurate. The continuous autofocus works beautifully. Um, I've been super pleased with the optical performance. And when we got our product briefing on this, uh, they showed us that basically the, the focusing elements are such a small part of the image pipeline that they don't have to move very far. So they move very rapidly um, and they can lock on that focus really, really fast. It also has such a beautiful character to the lens. Um, everything is rendered with this. Uh, it's one of those things you can't really quantify, but your subject is beautiful and sharp and the, the background and the out of focus areas are beautiful and soft. Um, and it just has such a beautiful look to it that you don't get with every lens. So in short, I'm trying to uh, figure out how many of my personal belongings I can sell so that I can buy one of these lenses. But if you have the money and you're a nature photographer, a wildlife photographer, a sports photographer, this is an absolute no brainer. You could basically have this and get rid of all your other telephoto lenses and use this for almost everything. Um, as I mentioned, my ideal kit going forward would be this lens. Um, I already checked. It does fit on the camera in my favorite 10 by axis 24 L backpack. I would carry this. I would carry the 12 to 100 F4 pro, maybe a fisheye, maybe the seven to 14 millimeter F 2.8. 
and I could shoot anything I want. I could shoot macro with that. I could shoot wide angle. I could shoot any wildlife that I came across would be, uh, I know I would have the confidence to, to shoot that very effectively with this. Um, I hope this helps. I think, honestly, if you're thinking about buying this lens and you can afford it, then go order it right now because there's going to be limited quantities when they, when they are released uh, later this winter. So um, if I were you, I would get on the list for this sucker because um, there's really nothing like it. You know, a lot of times I've, I've done videos in the past comparing, you know, one lens with a, a similar lens and there's not a similar lens. I, I don't know of another 300 to 1000 millimeter f5.6 lens. I, I, I don't know of one. Um, this is the Olympus 100 to 400 um, f5 to 6.3, which is a fantastic lens. Obviously much smaller when it's folded up. When we zoom it out, it's not a whole lot smaller. You know, it's less expensive, but it's not, it's like comparing a Camry to a Lamborghini. It's just not in the same ballpark. You can get where you need to go with the Camry, but that, that Lamborghini is gonna get you there in style and, and do things that the Camry just can't accomplish. So um, if you're a professional wildlife photographer, it's a no brainer. If you're a professional wildlife photographer who's using a bigger system, who you have the $15,000 lens, I would sell it and go buy this tomorrow and then you'll be good to go. You can either, even if you keep your other gear for other photography and just use this for your wildlife, I think you're going to be amazed at the image quality. So um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about the lens at all, I'll have it for a couple of days. So drop your questions in the comments. And uh, you know, if you have uh, you know, any, any comments about the price, I I'm not going to talk about that. I didn't decide what the price is. If you compare it to similar lenses with other systems, I think it's, I think it's half of, of, you know, comparable lenses. So, um, yeah, drop me an email, rob at robnightphotography.com, or drop me a comment, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.